Hi everyone, it's Adam with Milo's Restoration, and today we're going to be flipping this nightstand set. It's probably late mid-century. It's red oak, not my favorite to refinish, so we're going to get started on it right now. I'm just taking those doors off. Normal hardware removal, and I also found this. This is a late, probably 1940s power strip, I believe. It is by Mono White Electric Company. Just a little blast from the past there crazy to see how much things have changed since then and um also found a catalog from probably the 1950s in there too so it was a sears catalog interestingly enough and now i am pulling these screens out because instead of masking them it would just be easier to remove the styles and restaple them in later Okay, so that was just a quick cleaning with a scotch Bright pad and some simple green and a little bit of water to rinse it off with. Just a typical pre-paint clean. So I've just got some dab wood filler here. I like it. It gives you instructions to use it as a grain filler, which is actually what I'm going to be doing here. You know, do you need to grain fill all red oak? It kind of depends on how gnarly and grainy the red oak is. In this particular case, with it being probably this old and having this little finish on it, it was probably going to cause me a lot of problems. So I decided to mix it with some water to pancake kind of batter consistency, and then I filled the grain. Generally speaking, I like to keep it out of the corners and just do the flat areas because it's really hard to get into the corners to sand off that excess grain filler. And on top of that, whenever you mill red oak, generally speaking, the flat areas have the worst graining in them. So generally speaking, if you just prime the, uh, the, you know, the, the mill work, which would be like the edges and other places like that that have a profile on them, the graining probably won't be quite as bad. So, yeah, just I just like to avoid doing those curved surfaces. You can see me kind of burning the pads here, trying to get into there and sand those corners. I could have saved a lot of time by not doing that. So I've got my Harbor Freight gun here and I've got it hooked up to my cap spray, but either turbine works great. Like I said, I still think the Harbor Freight HVLP is one of the best purchases, especially now that you can buy needle sets for it. So yeah, just another recommendation for that. But nonetheless, I've got a 1.3 in here and I'm spraying BIN primer. What I'm going to do is, is spray it, look what needs work, probably power sand. Uh, I'm going to use Bondo Automotive Spackle on that. That'll be that red stuff that you see. And then on the second coat, I'll just give it a hand sanding and then move on to my top coat. I'll probably eliminate most of the grain with this process. If you want to really get rid of the grain, you might have to do multiple coats. And when I say multiple, I mean more than two. So that's just not really something that's worth it to me. But, you know... If you're really going for that modern look and you just want no seams, no grain, no anything, then you probably should take a little bit more caution in making sure that you get all of the grain out. Or if you're going to use a high gloss finish too. But this is just semi gloss, so it'll be okay.
So we have some emerald urethane here, and it is in Pigeon by Farrow & Ball. Semi-gloss, and I thin it by about 10 to 15 percent, and I'll just spray it out of my HVLP. I'll try to keep it out of the sun, generally speaking. Uh, you want to spray it under shade, give that paint a chance to level out, and on a day like today where I know I'm going to be able to get two coats in, I'll actually go put it on the sun in purpose. Just, I want to speed up that first kind of color coat and get it dried, and then I'll come back and sand it. I'm using a fine pad by Surf Prep for the sanding. I just got a foam pad and I'll just do the curved surfaces with that and then I'll hit the like the flat surfaces with a rigid foam pad by hand and I'll actually wrap a 320 grit block up in that to do that with. final coat here and you know with it only being really a two coat product you can't expect to do a little bit of minor touching up and I did do that but it's nothing major the good thing about using um, emerald urethane as opposed to a lacquer is that it touches up a lot better than a lacquer in my opinion So I'm just putting some hardware back on here, nothing fancy. Um, I'm going to dry fit everything here and just make sure that these styles are in the right place. With something this small and for little intricate things like this, it's really good to make sure that you dry fit everything and that you shoot all your staples in the middle and don't blow out any corners because if you do, then you've got to make another piece. and. That's a lot of time and setup for such a small task. In my opinion, it's almost not even worth it. So, just wrapping everything up here, and I'm going to get it staged. And if you've enjoyed this video, Please subscribe, let me know what you think about it, and 
if you are interested in anything restoration, we do antiques, furniture flipping, some regular construction restoration projects. If you're interested in any of that kind of stuff, then please subscribe. You'll probably enjoy the channel.